Years ago, I made a tier list of the classic rock tier list. Future Mike here. I sound like a fucking idiot. And I would say at least 50% of the people who watched that hated it. They loved watching it. They can't get enough of clicking on it and telling me how wrong I am, but they hated my list. Now, I know this may come as a surprise to some people, but yes, I do indeed grow and change my opinions over time. I feel like I have gained a lot more context and done a lot more listening of a lot more music, including music by the artists we're about to talk about today. So I think it would be a good time for a new classic rock tier list redemption episode. Let's do it. Guys, I want to give a massive thank you to today's sponsor. You know them, you love them, NordVPN. Virtual private networks are all the rage now in the online community. And Nord is so simple to use, you're just one click away from protection. Or enable auto connect for zero clicks away. With over 5,600 servers in 60 countries, it is easy to find a server that is closest to your location so that you have the best speeds. And yes, NordVPN is the fastest VPN. One access to streaming content that's not in your country? Connect to a server in a country where it is available. And now Nord is more than just a VPN with their new threat protection for desktop. It'll help you beat malware, trackers, and intrusive ads, even when you're not connected to a VPN at the time. Threat protection will scan what you download to make sure none of those files are infected. It'll even prevent you from accidentally visiting a malicious website. Make sure you're protected online today. Go to nordvpn.com slash btnight. Get a two-year plan with a huge discount and an additional month for free. Again, that is nordvpn.com slash btnight. Huge thank you to Nord for sponsoring this video. All right, enough of that stuff. Let's get into it. I found this tier list on the Tier Maker website, and it looks like a pretty damn good selection. Regardless of my feelings or your feelings on people on this list, I think it's very fair and easy to say everyone on here has contributed something important to the story of rock and roll. So keep that in mind. If I even put someone in F tier, that doesn't mean that they're complete garbage, just maybe mostly. All right, first up, we got the Almond Brothers. I'm gonna stick these bad boys in B tier. One of the things I appreciate a lot about the Almond Brothers is their jamminess. They have a fun uh, lyrical way of doing their melodies. But just all in all, I'm not a huge fan of their timbres, their vibe kind of gets boring and samey to me. When you see them live, they kill, undeniably so. Great time, good hangs. But I'm not all that excited to go pick up an album and throw on fucking Almond Brothers. ACDC, uh, A tier, uh, yeah, A tier. I gotta give them full credit for always fully embodying the sound of rock and roll. I have to dock them one tier because the songs are so fucking samey. Look, I've done a whole lot of bitching about ACDC throughout my career. I mean, there are ACDC songs I enjoy listening to on certain occasions. It's a fun time. But it seems like they've made an entire career of just chasing that exact same mindset musically and mode of being. I just don't give it. It's so horrifically boring. Alice Cooper. Ah, yeah. Uh, I think I'll give I'll give him beats here. I'll give him some points for theatrics. It's not really that important, but it is important to some degree. The guy does write some cool songs, though I'm usually not that impressed. I like his voice. Overall, someone I would consider to be honest. Aerosmith. Uh, uh, B tier. Uh, no, okay, I'll, I'll go. I'll go A tier. Future Mike again. I should have left it in fucking B tier. I know a lot of people are gonna bitch at me about this. That's totally fine. I get it. They are not the world's most talented musicians by a long shot. They wrote a shitload of hit songs that were really important to rock and roll, and also crafting that iconic rock sound. And compared to most of the other bands on this list. They were able to have relevance staying power far past their prime, if you will. It says quite a lot, honestly, to be able to still make it on hit radio even when like your time has passed. Don't love them, like a decent amount of the hits, but I think they deserve some credit. Bad Company. Uh, I'm tempted to put them in C, but I really don't know that I have enough context. I added this tier specifically to make sure that I can account for the fact that I'm not gonna listen to all this shit. From what I remember of Bad Company is yet another classic rock band that I was very background music feeling about it. The Beatles, S tier. There's plenty of complaints to have about the Beatles, 
air them out in my comments section. I've made multiple videos about the Beatles now. I think my opinion is very much out there. You guys get it. They're the foundations of what we understand as rock and roll today. Fantastic songwriters, hands down, way better as a team than they were separately. Billy Joel, uh, I'm gonna give him A tier. Yes, I'm incredibly biased on this because he's one of my favorite artists, top 10. He has an awesome elegance to his writing and great melodies. He has a far more creative way of examining harmony than most of his other contemporaries. He bends around a few different genres, which I really appreciate, and usually maintains a pretty consistent edge to everything. When Billy Joel does his sappy love shit, that's real hit or miss for me. Sometimes it's just so fucking boring. Sometimes that sappy love stuff is like spot on, friggin' uh, just the way you are. Ah, delicious. Blue Oyster Colt. Uh, uh, C. I'll give him a fucking C. The further I dive in the Blue Oyster Colts catalog, the more I realize how really not good they are. I understand that they're the foundations of a bunch of bands that I really like a lot, but frankly, it, it's such horrible writing. A lot of it seems like they just threw shit on a wall. They're horrible at structure. Their pacing is laughably shit. Their vocals, especially later in the career, are horrendous. The biggest reason why I'm not throwing them into F tier is because of Godzilla and Don't Fear the Reaper. And frankly, I don't know why that even lets me save them. Bon Jovi is not a fucking classic rock band. Not classic rock. So we'll toss that there. Boston ever so barely squeezes into classic rock, in my opinion. It's right on that cusp right before we started going into the 80s glam days and, and arena rock. I mean, they are the, the origins of arena rock or one of them. Boston, uh, I'll give him an A. This fucking album right here that's on here with the fucking spaceship on it is such an iconic album, fantastic front to back. The melodies are awesome. All the performances, delicious. I don't personally love everything. The hits that are off of this album, actually really, there's a bunch of them are so good. There are few artists on this list that I would say are completely irreplaceable. I would say Boston is, in my opinion, completely irreplaceable. Bruce fucking Springsteen. Every part of me wants to put him in fucking F tier. Every single fucking part. You know what? Fuck him. F tier. Don't give a shit. He's such a good storyteller. Fucking good for him. Like I keep saying, if you want to listen to a good story, use your Audible account. We're here to talk about music. Musically speaking, he has some decent songs. I'll give him that. And I'm not even going to say he's a horrible composer. But man, he, he is such a fucking self-indulgent prick. I just frankly can't stand listening to his shit. I fucking can't. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments down below. I don't give a fuck. Do it. Bob Seger. All right, I'm giving him a C. I understand Bob Seger's importance to the more chillaxed, again, storyteller era and realm of rock and roll and Americana, that fucking garbage ass word. But Bob Seger's sound is the same as the smell that comes off your like destitute uncle's breath after chugging four old Milwaukee's back to back. Just fucking stale beer breath. That's Bob Seger. I admit he has some good songs, even some that I'm like kind of okay with. But holy fuck, is it boring? Black Sabbath, uh, B tier. I don't love Black Sabbath, but during the time when they really were more in a classic rock camp in their origins. I enjoy that stuff more, don't love it. Yes, I understand they are the origins of metal, but this is a classic rock tier list, not a fucking metal tier list. As a classic rock band, I think that they're very good, very important for what they brought to music in the story of rock, but I just don't personally love them that much. Especially later in their career, after Ozzy left, you can really tell they had no fucking clue what they were doing. The riffs were bland, overly repetitive. The tones and the production were fucking hot garbage. Just a disaster. Cars. Um, I'm gonna say not enough context. I know there's at least one or two Cars songs I really like. I know very little about their catalog. I don't know that I have a whole lot to say off of that. Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, somewhere between here. Fucking S tier. Of all of the Southern rock contributions to classic rock, I would say Credence 
is the best and most important one, in my opinion. Adding in a little bit of that folk sensibility to the blues and rock side of things. Keeping it real simple, very relatable. John Fogarty's voice is love it or hate it. I used to really dislike it when I first heard it when I was younger, and then it just grew on me, and you're just like, yeah, it's like it's like an old friend you're meeting up with again. Chicago, uh, uh, do I wanna? Do I wanna? Fuck it, I'll give a mess here. Yes, there's a lot of bias here. I really, really like Chicago. I love how they bring a more classic rhythm and blues styling to kind of a rock-ish setting. They have more of that rhythm and blues ensemble going on, which means they're going to incorporate a little bit more jazz theory than what you would expect. And when their melodies hit, dude, they're so fucking elegant and enchanting and inviting, and you wanna sing along. You wanna sing along with them. The 80s era, very cheesy. Still some pretty damn engaging writing and cool harmony. Stuff after that is, I would say, probably a disappointment. <laughs> They're so undeniably fucking cool, though. Damn. Cream. I'll give them a B tier. I admire the talent. I admire a certain level of the creativity and how they were innovating at the time. I think that Clapton is definitely overrated. There's still quite a few tunes I like to listen to from Cream, but a lot of their catalog is just mired in a lot of the same tropes of experimentation with the psychedelic type of sound thing. I'm just like, eh, it's, it's fuck, fuck that. Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. I will give them, in my taste, a C tier. This is not to say they are bad. Again, similar to the whole Bob Seger vibe, they have some great songs. They know how to write. They know how to Tell the story. I just mostly find their sound very fucking dull, fully acknowledging their talent. And again, their contributions to the rock writing and American writing style. David Bowie, I'll give him an A tier. As I keep telling so many people, you are never going to get me to like David Bowie's voice ever. Irritating to me. I, I dislike it a lot. But I have to have a shitload of admiration for the level of experimentation he brought to the game. In my opinion, I would say 50-50 on successes and failures, if you will, but he still did experiment. He actually did want to fucking tell something. And you can absolutely tell it's not manufactured bullshit. It's coming from a place of real artistry, and that deserves a hell of a lot of respect. Not to mention the number of people who are like, yeah, Bowie destroys, and I'm like, okay, I don't personally fully get it, but like I get it enough. Def Leppard is not a fucking classic rock band. Deep Purple, uh, I'll give him a B. Richie Blackmore did a fucking shitload for the guitar. He brought a completely different aspect of thinking about how to approach playing the guitar and also just how to make rock music. While I personally don't find a lot of their writing that engaging or that fun, uh, they do have an exceptional amount of experimentation that they try to dive into. Definitely worthy of respect. Dire Straits. I'm gonna say not enough context. Based upon what I've heard from Dire Straits, it's really not my sound, it's not my thing, though I do admire how they try to find their own unique niche in the classic rock sound. Mark Knopfler's finger-picking style destroys. Really fucking cool. If I had a gun to my head, I'd probably put him in C tier just because of my own personal tastes. But again, I don't think I have quite enough context to be able to really rank them appropriately. The Eagles, fucking F tier. I don't wanna hear about how great of fucking songwriters they are. I don't wanna hear about how their greatest hits album is the number one selling album of all time. I don't give a shit. They have such a fucking deep catalog and most of it is fucking garbage. Don Henley can kiss every centimeter of my fat ass. Elton John, all right, I'll give him A tier. Actually, you know what? Fuck that. Hate me for it. I'm giving him B tier. I think Billy Joel was better than Elton John. Elton John and Billy Joel are like two sides of the same coin. They're the same kind of writers from a similar era, but they have their own definitely individual styles. Both piano focused, both with a slight edge of rock. I find myself far more often hooked in to the Billy Joel melodies than I do the Elton John melodies. Elton John does have a pretty cool sensibility of harmony and progression, which I think is interesting. But based upon what I've heard, I think Billy Joel is a little more eclectic and dives into more different kinds of pop sensibilities that keeps it vibrant for me. Eric Clapton, uh, fuck, C tier. This is fully acknowledging that Eric Clapton has written a lot of very good hit songs, a lot. <sighs> All right, you know what? I'm being overly harsh. 
B tier. I will upgrade Eric to B tier because I'm thinking through it now and I'm just like, there really are a lot of really good fucking hit songs from Clapton that I really enjoy. Basically from the 70s up through into the 90s, he was writing great songs that were even still relevant during the time they were written. I hate to admit it because there's people who fap so hard to Clapton and they're wrong. <laughs> but even when there is this whole depth of his catalog that bores the shit out of me, there are so many songs of his that I actually really enjoy. I gotta figure, all right, it's B tier. It's fucking B tier. The fuck is General Electric doing here? Okay, Electric Light Orchestra, I'll give them B tier. I love it when they tap into their prog sensibilities a little bit more. Very vibrant, fun, big wide eyes. It's another example of me really appreciating the experimentation when they get out there, and sometimes it's killer. So cool. Other times it's like, yeah. I really appreciate the fact that they took the art of making music seriously, but they didn't take themselves too seriously. I think you can totally hear that they're have just having fun. That's cool. Foreigner, not enough context. I know for sure I've definitely listened to a number of different Foreigner songs. I can't remember what the fuck they are offhand. I don't know. Fleetwood Mac, I'll give them a B tier. Undeniably great songwriters, undeniably very good melody writers. I definitely don't latch onto them as tightly as a lot of other people do. Most of what I listen to, if, if I'm not bored by it, I at least admire the craftsmanship involved and I, I get the hook. I get how they're trying to pull you in. And it's a very uh, subtle in comparison to a lot of other rock bands. Reason why I'm not throwing them in A or S tier is because of my own personal taste. Maybe it's because I wasn't raised with them, but th they just haven't fully just... Ugh. Though I do like some Fleetwood Mac songs. They're cool. Grateful Dead, C tier. The Grateful Dead have written some great songs. They are like the jam band of jam bands, right? Besides like Fish. If I was bringing their fan base into any level of analysis, they would be F tier fucking instantly. Most of their studio work is pretty fucking boring. And their live shit, while it can be good, I think is a little overrated compared to other jam bands. But then again, they were the earliest, so maybe it's not a fair comparison. I don't know, they just mostly fucking bore me. Genesis, B tier. At the forefront of prog rock, means a lot to me very much personally. I appreciate their experimentation, but I feel like there is a whole lot of time they spend just kind of fucking off, especially later in their career when they dialed back a little bit of the dancey, light on your fucking feet, uh, folk English type of sound. They really wanted to push more into the timbre side of things, especially about the time Phil Collins is coming on board, right? And I don't think they ever quite got the timbre thing dialed in and great. Unlike another band that we will be talking about on this list. I have a massive level of appreciation for what they brought to Prague, but I'm just fucking, <sighs> for the most part, the Guns N' Roses is not a fucking classic rock band. Heart. I'm gonna say not enough context. A couple of their hits I really like. I actually listened to a Heart song a few weeks ago suggested by one of you guys that killed. Super fucking cool. Apparently it's also their favorite song they've ever done. Okay, what the fuck is this? I literally spent 15 fucking minutes Google searching a bajillion different fucking searches to figure out what the fuck this is. I couldn't find this logo anywhere. I even reverse image searched it and Google doesn't know what the fuck it is. If you know what it is, please feel free to let me know in the comments. But until that time, we're gonna put this on the get your stupid fucking bullshit out of here tier. Jimi Hendrix, A tier. As a writer, I think he's extremely overrated. As a guitar player, but outside of his influence context, I think he's also overrated. Now, when you bring all of the context back into the level of influence he had on all of that shit, especially at the time coming right into the heart of the psychedelic rock movement. Jimmy is so fundamental and important to everything that we conceive to be rock today that I don't know how I can put him any lower than A tier. I don't personally find listening to a lot of his stuff all that enjoyable usually. I think it's interesting, sometimes fun, but he's just not my bag, man. Journey, not classic rock. Leonard Skinnerd, I'll give them B tier. Wrote some very great songs, some of which I enjoy. Very important and influential coming out of the Southern rock scene. I would say at least as influential as Credence, but never really resonated with me, to be honest with you. Led Zeppelin, 
S tier, even taking into account their early years theft of other people's songs. They're damn good at stealing it and making you feel like it was Zeppelin. And even afterwards, a lot of their later shit was still really fucking cool. I like listening to a ton of their songs and they are a fundamental foundation to classic rock and frankly, to all of the instruments there for bass, for vocals, for drums, for guitar. All of those guys are extremely influential on all of those instruments in this genre. Pink Floyd, S tier. I do not love Pink Floyd, but after having done my deep dive into Pink Floyd, you should check out that video. It's pretty fucking good. I have grown a massive level of respect for them. Technically a part of the prog rock movement and also the psych rock movement. Just like the Beatles, another instance of much better as a group than they are separately. And here I was talking about Genesis getting in touch with their timbre game better. Pink Floyd did what Genesis was trying to achieve. Most of Pink Floyd's compositions are pretty fucking boring, but the timbres, the sound envelopes, the sound design, all just so engrossing, especially on their best records. Basically, Dark Side Up Through the Wall is like the prime time when it was just, oh, the production was on point. Even though, again, if you take the compositions just like as math and map it out, boring as sin but then you put the timbre to those compositions and you're like, fuck. Masters at what they did. The Police, I'll give them an A tier. I'm not hugely in love with The Police, but I do like The Police. And realizing now there's a whole bunch of songs I didn't realize they wrote and performed. And really taking a look at some of the music theory and some of their deeper cuts and even some of the pop hits, you're like, oh, this is far more sophisticated than I was giving it credit for. They do get pretty experimental from time to time, I mostly hate that though. <laughs> I don't like when the police experiment. Queen, S tier. I've talked about Queen ad nauseum. They're just a fucking excellent band. Even their deeper cuts, while they can be a little bit more boring, are not like painfully kill me boring. Freddie Mercury, indomitable. Brian May destroys, of course. Just an absolutely exceptional group with exceptional writing and exceptional performances. Like. So damn well done. Fully taking advantage of that new technology of multi-track recording and really seeing how far you can push it to the limit. Rolling Stones, gotta fucking give them S tier. In my own personal estimation, I'd probably throw them down here at A tier, but they are incredibly influential and foundational to the sound of rock and roll. And another instance where you're like, oh shit, I didn't realize that was a song by the Rolling Stones. From what I've heard, their deep cuts kind of suck, but they are undeniably iconic and extremely important to what we consider rock and roll today. It's just the way it is. Rush. Oh, you guys are gonna hate me because it's definitely not S tier. I'll give them A tier. They are not the most popular band on this list, but the fans that they do have are fucking super fans. And it's not because they're idiots and it's not because Rush makes garbage, it's because there is something really strong there at the core of what's going on with Rush. As the years have gone by, I've realized it's not that I don't like Rush, it's that I don't like Rush's timbres. When I hear bands covering Rush songs, I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. When I hear Rush do it, I'm like, oh, I really don't like that guitar tone at all. It's most likely a limitation of the technology at the time and what they were trying to go for. But I mean, Alex Lifeson really did not update his guitar tone at fucking all. And that's probably the biggest thing for me keeping them out of S tier is I, I get bored pretty quickly with some Rush stuff. Undeniably 2112 destroys. Just fucking excellent album front to back. But I want more edge out of Rush. I really do. And I like it better when bands with more edge cover their songs. Super Tramp. I think I'm gonna have to put them in not enough context at this point. From what I've heard of Super Tramp, I really admire their experimentation. I think they have a cool songwriting sensibility. I don't know that I have quite enough listening experience with them to really have a solid grading. Their vocals are really weird and I, I might hate them, I don't know. <laughs> At very least, I can definitely say just with the few tracks I have listened to, they a thousand percent have their own identity and that's cool. Sticks, fucking C tier. Sticks have some cool hits. They also venture off into the proggy shit a little bit. Their proggy shit is probably some of the most weak sauce out of any of the bands on this list. I don't know how to describe it other than I just feel like they miss the point more often than not. They're just kind of throwing shit around. The Doobie Brothers. 
I'll give them a B. Doobie Brothers, super chill, great groove, very relaxed and just like, yeah, fucking what's up, you know? <laughs> I admire that that's what they wanted to bring to the table. It's again, not my favorite thing, which is why it's not higher on the list for me, but definitely fully acknowledge that they brought some great songs and some really chill, cool vibes. So definitely no disrespect to the Doobie Brothers whatsoever. Fucking good songwriters. The Doors, fucking C tier. The Doors did bring some mild level of innovation. Future Mike here, I'm using the word innovation very loosely. But they mostly sound like shit. The only reason why they get even C fucking tier right now is because I can hear the influence that the Doors had on a bunch of people. And looking back, I'm like, okay, for the time, I can see why this is considered like a unique niche that they carved for themselves. But also fuck the doors. The Who, B tier. There are quite a few songs by The Who that I think are really cool, very well done. When they start getting into more experimental territory is actually when I start to have more fun with them. But again, there's a certain level of blandness. It's kind of like the proto-ish prog thing a little bit. Maybe I'm wrong on this. I just don't think they quite had the skill set for arranging to fully get across the effects that they wanted to do when they got a little bit more experimental. And frankly, I just very rarely ever find myself putting them on. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, fucking F, they're fucking F. I fully acknowledge Tom Petty is revered as an extremely good songwriter, and I'll give him that credit. He's an extremely good songwriter, has some great melodies. But the greatest sin in rock and roll, in my personal opinion, is constantly being medium. And holy fuck, if I had to describe Tom Petty as one word, medium. Medium tempo, medium loudness, medium fucking everything. His most excitable song that I've heard, The Running Down the Dream, even that is so painfully fucking mild. It's like when you don't salt your food because you think it's spicy. Like, fuck off. Van Halen, A tier. Actually, you know what? I don't technically think they're classic rock. I'll put them there. Based upon the influence and based upon the timing and the sound, I think they fit very squarely into the hair rock and the arena rock phase, and I think they're, they're just better suited there. ZZ Top, uh, also not classic rock in my opinion, just the wrong era. All right, so this is my tier list. Let's compare it to my last one. All right, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, The Beatles, Queen, all in S tier, that all checks out. Cream in A tier, I put them down where? Put them in B tier, right? Yeah, B tier. Credence got bumped up. Bowie's still an A, right? Yeah, Bowie's still an A. All right, that's consistent. Elton John in A tier? Uh-oh. <laughs> bumped him down to B. Rolling Stones, bumped them up to S tier like a fucking idiot. ACDC went up to A tier, right? Yeah. Aerosmith, B tier? Is that where they are? I moved them up to A tier. The fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Billy Joel got moved up to A tier because I'm a fucking massive Billy Joel simp. Deep Purple, they're in B. Yeah, they're in B still. Jimi Hendrix went up to A tier, right? Yeah. Leonard Skinner's still B tier. Where's the Rush? Still B tier? Where did I fucking put them? Put them in A tier. All right. Makes a little more sense. The Who got bumped up to B tier. All right. Fleetwood Mac got bumped up to B tier. All right. Black Sabbath got bumped up to B tier. All right. Everyone's moving up in the world. The doors in F tier can pretty much go into D tier, and we can call all of those fucking this shit right here. The doors got moved up to C tier. Fuck. Fuck, dude. Same with the Grateful Dead. The fuck am I doing with myself? Eagles still suck ass. <laughs> I forget who the fuck this is. I can't even see it. Either way. That's my list. Fuck you. <laughs>